Okay folks, uh, today we're going to be doing a drum brake inspection. This is going to be on a 98 Silverado. Uh, however, it will pretty much work for any GM rear brake. Uh, I did a video on how to change rear brake pads, but this is more just a video on you know how to check to see if you actually need them. So I've supported the vehicle. It's up on jack stands. It's blocked, so it's not going anywhere. I've already broken the nuts loose, so they should be kind of loose. Let's go ahead and take these off so we can get to the drum. Okay, I'm going to set these aside running board over here and this wheel should pop off <clears throat> heavy wheel it is okay so here's our drum assembly you don't have to remember the orientation you take it off as drum assembly should be already balanced so no matter how you put it back it should work now if everything's nice and this fitting isn't too tight this should slide off Actually, it looks like I'm fetching up on the center part here. I'm going to spray some oil on that. It's just where the axle lives. We could give that a little time to work, but... We can put a little wedge between the backing plate and the drum. Oh wow, look at that. Here she comes. It's a good sign that there's not a big ridge on the inside of this drum. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so we got the drum off. So let's see what we're looking at here. We have our drum which we're probably going to paint, so we'll save that for later, but uh, what you're looking for is a big lip right here where the drum has been so, you know, machined that it actually creates a lip that actually makes it hard to come off. There's very minimal lip here. Um, no real glazing or anything like that on the inside. No big grooves or anything along those lines. And also, primarily, we're looking at pad, the, the pads and how thick they are. And you can tell because there are rivets here. Um, they'll eventually wear down to the rivets, uh, but there's lots of pad left here on both sides actually. Outside of being dirty, everything looks good. There are no apparent brake fluid leaks. It's hard to see with the sun um, anywhere. So our, uh, our cylinder is fine and all our brake equipment and springs are in place. So it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with this brake. If I had any brake cleaner, I'd wash it, but I don't, so uh, I won't. But we can pretty much just put this thing uh, right back on. What I'll do is I'll put a little anti-seize along this surface here because that's where the brake drum sits and that can rust on if you're not careful. Um, but other than that, this brake looks good. So uh, I'm gonna paint the drum and we're gonna put it right back on. Okay, so with the inspection complete and the brake assembly good enough, we did paint our drums blue. Let's stick them on here. And notice before I do this, I did put some antices around the lip here of where the axle is also uh, run the threads. This way we don't get any rust problems. Squeeze fit like so. This is free. It's what we like. We'll now roll in our wheel, which will also sit up here. Chrome is very heavy. And it too is up there. And a little bit more lock, uh, thread lubricant, anti-seize on the edge here, because it seems this acorn nut tends to dig into the lip here. I don't want it digging too much. So on each little lug nut, I'll put a little bit just so it'll spread around when we do do that. And that's roughly how you, you know, inspect the brakes on a truck. I do have a video on how to replace the pads, but if you just want to open this up, and we'll need to because you can see how tight that drum was. If a lip ever does occur, we'll never get this drum off it. So we'll want to keep inspecting it, exercising it if you will, to make sure it works fine. But that is pretty much how you inspect the drum brakes on the rear of most GM rear wheel drive or four wheel drive drum brakes.